Our first speaker of the afternoon. so maybe we're the only ones that saw it that way. It's Billows. We'll take this draw with Legacy. Looked onside, though. Line's been to drop the puck. And it's dropped. Gullinson gets it. Stan flips it around Martell. Back into the Hampton zone from Eisner. We're approaching the midway point of this third and final period. Glenn Patrick has it. Pass on the right side. Gullinson couldn't intercept it. It hopped over a stick to Meisner. He's in at the right circle, but he lost it to Gullinson. Stan staying with it. Flips it out for Legacy. He's blocked. It comes back in the zone, delayed offside as Billows touches that's call. With this break in the action, the score of 4-2 Erie. Let's take this quick 30-second timeout. Welcome back to Erie Blades Championship Hockey. We welcome those on our own station, WLKK, and also WYVA, Yorktown, Virginia. Abra gets it out for Minus over the line. High shot gloved by Bellamere. On the right side, it goes to Lebanon. Blocked by Rhinus. I can see some fog forming down on the ice now as it gets warmer down there. Dort side. Keeps it in now at the left point as Lemel intercepts it. Lead pass. Now to Sheridan. Broken up by Dave Dornsife. Standing up strong at his blue line. Over the center line. He'll dump it to the right corner. It comes out in front at Bellevere. Sweeps it for McPhee. The fog is starting to form down on the ice. That's what the heat inside the building will do. Imagine the Stanley Cup playoffs in June. Here's Dean getting a nice pass. And he breaks in and he scores. And it's 4-3 to three as Kelly Dean. Got a nice pass at the blue line, and he broke in on Walker, and with 9.27 to go, it is a one-goal game. And Hampton getting, I think that might have been their first shot on Kerry Walker, or second. And it goes in. You don't need the shots. One of them will do, and that time, Dean got that pass. First shot on goal of the period. Dean got the pass, and he broke free in on Walker, and he scored. So Kelly Dean has turned it around a little bit. Four to three now. And Kelly Dean is fifth to the playoffs from Greg McPhee at 10.33. Again, Kelly Dean is fifth to the playoffs from Greg McPhee at 10.33. It's a different game now. 9.27 left. The Blades are only up by one. Let's see what they're made of. McPhee with a nice pass. Lahash on the left side, out of the north side. Blades were caught napping that time as Sheard gets it back. Dumps it into the left wing corner. Mancini after it with Martell. Around the boards, far side. Hamelin, now tied up by Hanson. It comes loose to Patrick. Glenn Patrick with it. Broken up by Sheard, but it comes back to Patrick. He rushes. Now over the center line. Patrick to Rombo. Rombo, the backhander wide. It came out, and it was poked away now to Patrick in the corner. Patrick tries to center it. Walker flips it to the near corner. Three players jam up. Heine got it out. Centers it in front of Rombo's stick. He can't find the handle, and now the hash can't. Boy, just will flip it up high. And down the length of the ice. This will be an icing. But the Blades want to get their thoughts together. They're still up four to three. And still playing solid hockey in this third period. But that one shot has made all the difference in the world in this game. It sure has. And the Blades somewhat panicked under. They had possession of the puck behind the net. Uh, had the player came in. And uh, the Erie player, I didn't catch who it was. But he just dumped it all the way down ice for icing. I believe he could have started up ice. But uh, he was afraid he saw the Hampton player coming at him. And he chose to ice it. And talk about that fog, John Paul. This reminds me of the famous Stanley Cup game a few years back between the Flyers and Maple Leafs. The fog was so bad, you could already see the players. They had to stop the game every uh, minute and have the players skate around ice to try to break up the fog. It's not nearly that bad now, but it's starting to form. 
Face off left side of Kerry Walker. Everyone told me that the game will end before that fog does set in. Here's Leo. Right side to Sheard. Ball over the center line. Dumps it left corner. On the far side, it's Hamlin. Renee Hamlin comes back left side of the ice across his blue line. Hamlin against Hansis. Getting by. Now against Pallon. Takes the hip check to the boards. It goes to Sheard. Ball in the corner now with Pallon and Robbo. Sheard digs it out. Patrick stopping his progress. Now Heineck does as well. Four players along the near side. Pallon had it. He's blocked. Heineck keeps it in. Now Sheard flips it out. Picked up by Glenn Patrick. Neutral zone to Martell. Norm, 75-footer, goes wide in the near corner. Sheard lost it off the end of his stick. Now flips it to the right side for Pallon. Danielle for Hansis. Blocked by McPhee. Kept in the zone by Heineck. Now it's flipped down, and Hansis will send it out of the zone. McPhee getting to it. Now coming back against Hansis. McPhee getting by. Over the line. Still with it. Poked away by Leo. Martell, long drive wide. And it was already whistled down on an offside. And play has stopped with 7.42 to play. And it is a 4-3 to three early lead. And what did we say before the game? We said it would be a terrific game. We said the excitement would be supreme. And that's what it is. 7.42 left the regulation time. Hanson's experience starting to show a little bit. They're not panicking. They have all the time in the world left to score, yet they're playing their game. They're not even looking at that clock out there. They're not doing anything stupid. They're not just dumping the puck in. They're setting up. You can see the players wait at the blue line. They're playing their game. Face off outside the Erie Blades blue line. Those saves that Bellamere made, spectacular. Even more so when you think about them now. It's a one-goal deficit for Hampton. Lahash flipping it. Knocked down by Keeler, but he missed it. He got Devlin. The fog now looking stronger out there. On the right side of the ice, Billows breaks it over center to Coates. Over the line comes Brian Coates. He'll flip it as he's checked by Lahash. It comes around the boards far side. Kept in by Meisner. Centering pass is blocked. It goes behind the net. Legacy. Left side for James. Val by Meisner. Over the blue line. Three on two now as he dumps it into the right corner. Devlin chasing it. Bellamere out of the net. Fog really setting in. It's loose behind it. And Devlin and James run into each other as Meisner gets it right side. Over his blue line. Across center. Long blast wide and high of Walker. To the near side. It's kept in a coat by Coates. He loses to Devlin. Paul clears it out. Legacy chasing after it against McPhee. McPhee now right side of Mike Keeler. Keeler going with it. Throws it back. McPhee has it over the center line. Right side, Mike Keeler back over the Erie line. Still with it. Poke loose to Billows. Now back the other way. Legacy clears it out of the zone. Blades standing up strong at their blue line now as McPhee has it. Greg McPhee flips the puck in. A bouncer. Walker stops that. Four to three. Erie's on top. Six and a half minutes left. Around the left side for Gullison. Too far. Down it goes into the neutral zone. Picked up by Martel. Blades change on the fly. Norm shot for the center line. Knocked down Walker. Lost the rebound. He swept it out, though. On the left side, Gullison clears it out of the zone. That one was close. Martell flipping it. Off Billows. Larry keeps it in. The 60-footer is wide. Comes out short side. Gullison on it. Lemelin chasing him. On the left side, Hansis. Can't get it out by Martell. Norm sends it right corner. Lahash and Dean are there. They battle for it. Lemelin comes in. So does Dornside. Dorney flipping it off the boards for Gullison. Now he lost it. Hansis there. Checked by Lemelin. Great play by Lemelin, but now it's intercepted by Dornside. On the left to Gullison. Billows blocks it and sends it back in. No doubt, Hampton is picking up on the momentum. No doubt about it. They are controlling it right now as that puck lands into the seats and out of play. A face-off is coming up, and here he right now with 5.37 to play, at least for the last couple of minutes, was forming a defensive shell at their own blue line, trying to stop Hampton's penetration. They sure are. They're getting defensive. You can't do that with 5.37 left and a one-goal lead. Whenever they get the puck, they're just concerned about getting it out over the blue line. You haven't seen them make any effort to start an up-ice rush here in the last two minutes. They're forcing the face-offs, maybe icing it when they get the chance. They're just trying to get out of that Hampton zone. And again, this is no time to start doing that. Hampton Aces right now controlling things. Face-off, left side of Walker. Haven't had many shots, but the one that they did get really counted. Off the draw, Lemelin. Low shot blocked by Rhinus. It's kept in by Martell. To the right corner for Lemelin against Pallon. In front, Leo stopped it. Behind the net, Sheridan. Tied up by Leo. Now Dean and Pallon go in there, and it's jammed up as Leo and Dean now talk to each other. And they break up. Blades must control themselves. They sure don't want to lose Dick Leo for five minutes out of the final 5.24. Well, you know he'll probably be out there for about four of those minutes, especially now in this kind of a situation. A penalty at this stage of the game will hurt or could hurt either club. Bill Belinkus will probably only call something that he absolutely has to at this stage of the game. 
four to three before a sellout crowd at the field house in standing room only. And the Blades right now are up four to three as Hampton came back. Quick whistle off the face off as Abgar was moving before it was dropped. They'll try it again. Ron Hansis against John Sheridan for the injured Pat Donnelly out with a right knee injury, injured it in Thursday's game against the Erie Blades in Hampton. And what an important face off this is. They're all gonna be important from here on in, especially the ones deep in your zone. Neutral ice, at least you have some breathing room. This is in tight. Puck bounced off that face off and Dean shot went wide. Behind the net it goes. Lemelin tries to dig it out with Leo. Now Gullison gets it. Around the right side for Abgrau. Abby sends it out of the zone. Patrick and Hansis race for it. It comes back the other way to Martell. Thor Martell up for Sheridan. More fog now all over the ice. Hansis breaks up the play in his own zone, clears it out. Five minutes left. Martell back the other way. Right side to Sheridan. Poked out. All the way back the other way. 4.53 to go. Lemelin left side now to Patrick. Up for Sheridan. Lead pass for Kelly Dean. Deep into the Erie zone. Leo cutting him off. Dick Leo getting to it. Now with a little bit of room. Leo wide of Lloyd Rombo. At the center line, Leo taken down. As the puck is sent into Abgrau. His shot through a screen hit Glenn Patrick. In the left corner. It's centered on the board. Abgrau gets it. He fanned on it. That fog is really bad now in that left corner. Near side, Rhinus digs it out. Martell on him, centered it out, but it's blocked by Bellamere. Gullison gets it. Abgrau in front of the net. Stan checked. Loose puck, Abgrau digging it out. And now Bellamere will stop it at the side of the net and force the face off. The only thing he can do when that fog sets in like that is skate around and the friction will get that fog right down. But the fog right now is in more places than where it started. It started in the Aces zone, deep behind Bellamere, but it's spread around. And here he carried the puck up ice that time, and finally they got in the Hampton zone for the first time in a period of, I'd say, close to four minutes. Bellamere smothered the puck. It really wasn't uh, held up against the board. So there's a face-off to the left of goaltender Bellamere. And I see number 11, the captain of the Hampton Aces, Larry Bill is out there. And you're right, John Paul, with 4.13 left in regulation time. You'll see Bill is out there probably for just about the remainder of this game. Or as much as he can. At least I'd say three minutes. Here's Keeler getting it. They'll probably try to pace him so that he can be out there. Lahash now flips it into the zone. A bouncer. Bellamere stops that. He's got shots to contend with another fog, too. McPhee with it. Looking. Meisner tries to sneak ahead for a breakaway. They're going to have to watch him. Now it's McPhee carrying over the line. Slashed by the hash on, my, on McPhee. Centering pass. Coach stopped by Walker. Rebound loose in front. And Devlin sends it wide. And the whistle stops on the slash from Floyd Lahash. As Paul Devlin argues that. Lahash slashed Greg McPhee. And so... It'll be two minutes. And if the Erie Blades penalty killers ever need a big effort, they will need it right now. Floyd Lahash out two minutes on a slash. And the time of Floyd Lahash slashing penalty, 16-16. John Paul, this is very similar to the first game played here in this series. You remember the Blades had the one goal lead, and they were shorthanded with about the same amount of time left. They got a penalty, and uh, about 20 seconds into that penalty, Paul Shear went off, and the Blades were shorthanded two men, and they had to kill off. Uh, about 1 minute and 40 seconds with a two-man advantage and only a one-goal lead. They did it in the first game of the playoffs. Let's see if they can kill off the one-man advantage by Hampton right here with 3.44 left in regulation time. Face off left side of Kerry Walker. Ron Hansen now comes out to replace Pierre Legacy for this face off against Larry Billows. Two-minute minor on Legacy. Call it 16-14. On, Le on Lahash. Legacy went to the bench. Hansis against Billows for the draw. Off the draw, Billows. Right point, Keeler. Off the boards for Billows. He'll send it up in front for Meisner. He holds it in the right corner now. Looks around out to the right point for Keeler. Keeler holds it. A screen set up in front now to Billows in the right circle. Billows has it poked by Pallon. Passes left side. McPhee in front. It's stopped. Leo dives and clears it. Dick Leo with a big diving play. Now it's Mike Keeler. In his own zone, 3.17 to go in the hockey game, 1.30 to go in the power play. To Billows, Lario in the center line on his off-wing side, breaks over the line, bumped by Leo, Billows still moving, centers it off the skate of Pallon. Danny flips it all the way down ice off Hansen's stick. In on Bellamere. He'll leave it for Meisner. 1.15 to go in the power play. Meisner with it, holding on. Now leaves it for Mike Keeler. Aces coming back up ice. Keeler 
guides the puck. 104 to go. On the man advantage over the center line to McPhee. Left circle, got around his man, answers. In the slot, Dean shot. Walker's got it somewhere, it still is. And Walker with a brilliant move in front of the net. And uh, that brings a crowd on their feet. And in all honesty, I waited for the goal line because no way could you find the puck in that maze of players. Well, I don't know how Kerry Walker found that puck. There were skates and there were sticks and there were bunnies everywhere just flying all around. A real goal mouth scramble. The fans were chanting, Kerry, Kerry. Walker picked that puck right out of all those skates, put the big glove right on it, spun it right down in the ice. 51 seconds still left in Lahash's penalty. 2.35 left in regulation time. The Blades own a very, very slim 4-3 to three lead. Face-off comes up to Kerry Walker's right side. Dennis Abrow looking things over. Now Ronnie Hantis is there. Hantis and Abgrau, Leo, Pallon, and Sheard are all there, but somebody's got to go off and it's Abgrau. So it's Hantis, Sheard, Pallon, and Leo, and now Pierre Legacy comes out with Dennis Abgrau, and that's going to be the pair to replace Hantis and Paul Sheard. And now they send Abgrau back, so it's not. Sheard's staying out there. Nick Polano wanting to keep his captain out there. Face off, right side of Walker now. Everyone set up the draw. Sheridan wins for McPhee. Shot through a screen wide. Out to the far side. Sheard will get it. Has a little bit of room, and he'll look for it. He skates up over the center line. Flips it deep into the right corner. In the Hampton zone, McPhee leaves it, and it died there. Now he picks it back up. 35 seconds of the power play for Hampton. McPhee over the center line. Breaks to Kelly Dean. Dean blocked Danny. Pallant took it away. Pallant gets his own pass off the boards. Now lost it to Roger Lemelin. Lemelin sends it off the boards right side and gets it himself. 20 seconds up to the power play. Lemelin. Kelly Dean offside and the whistle stops playing. And Kelly Dean was guilty there. Uh, he was. Good. He just took himself right out of the play. He wasn't watching where he was skating. He was seeing somebody on the right side. He did not see the puck carrier. He went in uh, two feet offside before the puck went over. He was very guilty there. He lost his concentration, no doubt about that. Poor play by Kelly Dean, and now the faceoff is outside of the blue line. 17 seconds left in the power play, 2.01 left in regulation time. Both Nick Pilano and Buzz McPherson, the respective coaches, have both said that this has been by far the best series that they have ever been involved in. And I'm sure that after tonight, their comments will not change. If anything, they'll be stronger. Ron Hansis against John Sheridan for this draw. 17 seconds left in the man advantage. 2-0-1 left in the game. Erie 4, Hampton 3. One of these teams will carry the John Mitchell Cup all over the ice surface. One will not. But both teams should drink the champagne. They're playing that well right now. Neither team is dying. Martell, long blast stopped by Walker from way out. Poulon gets it. 10 seconds left on the power play. Clears it out. Sheard races for the puck shorthanded against Martell. Sheard gets it. And a shot went off the post. Wasn't able to get the good wood on it. Ball now battles with Roger Levin on the hash. penalty is over. A great penalty killing effort for the Erie Blades. Same as Hampton was earlier. Here's Kelly Dean over the line. Stopped by Hanson and the hash clears it out. A minute 30 to go. Paul Sheard comes to the bench, gets a great hand, as do the rest of the Erie Blades. Glenn Patrick on it now. Starts back on the fly. Patrick around hands as he's taken down. Puck goes loose to Dortside, gets it. Dorney over the line, 60 footer up high, and Bellamere was ducking. Comes to the right side for Abgrad. He'll send it around the boards. Martell after it. Abby battling. And let's see, no whistle yet. Bill Belinkus wants it to be moved, and it is. Now Martell sends it to the boards. Right side, Lahash keeps it in. For Gullison, it's blocked. Legacy went for it, but it comes out of the zone. Less than a minute to go. Dortzai's pass, blocked by Patrick in the blue line, and sent into the Erie zone. A race to the puck. Bellamere runs to the bench. Around the boards, it's cleared out. The net is empty. Hampton's set is empty. 40 seconds left in the game. Keeler to McPhee. They've got the extra attacker. To Billows. Back the other way. Block. Lahash fires it. It's blocked by Rombo. Waits for his mates to clear. 60-footer stopped by Walker. Lahash clears out again. 28 seconds left. What a finish. And it's still not over. Keeler behind it at the Walker. Lahash cranks it off the boards by McPhee. All the way down ice. All the way down there. 16 seconds left. Keeler gets it. Sheard bumps it in. It comes right out in front of the net. It's blocked to the far side. Sheard with the back end. And out behind the net. Keeler sends it on. In five seconds, the Erie Blades will be champion for the Northeastern Hockey League. And that's it. The Erie Blades, before a sellout crowd standing in the rolling, have won the Northeastern Hockey League playoff championship. They will receive the John Mitchell Trophy. What a finish to a great hockey series between 
two great teams. Everybody up at their feet at the field house. If you had to write a storybook ending to the Blade season, this would be it. The players are all pumped up. Everybody down there, Wayne has got the traditional handshaking ceremonies. This has been one of the best series that any spectator could ever want to watch. Both teams should drink some champagne. Neither team quit. And in the two sportsmanlike style, the line is starting with the two goaltenders. Bella Muir and Kerry Walker shaking hands. Everybody's in that line, and everybody's on their feet. This has been a series to watch. And the teams are lined up. Their traditional handshake. And Muzz McPherson out there, he's just hugging the Blaze players. He's hugging Daniel Pond right now. He hugged Kerry Walker. And you got to give the Aces credit. What a series they had, and they held it tough. The score is very indicative of the series. Here he won by one goal. They won by one game. Five of the seven games were scored by one goal. Uh, counting that 2 nothing game should have been a one nothing game. And uh, some of the Hampton players, I detect tears in their eyes. The Blaze players are overjoyed. It's a real emotional scene out there. The fans are going wild. Back to John. Watch when Nick Pilato and Buzz McPherson meet. They're going to shake hands. It's ironic when you see it happen. Players battling the way they do, hugging each other when it's over. Watch Nick Pilato and Buzz McPherson. I bet he was going to kiss them. <laughs> they know it's been a heck of a series. And Nick and Buzz lifted their arms in the air and just shaking hands. Uh, that's a tribute to both coaches. I figured Buzz might, might try to wrestle him down with a big bear hug. That's the kind of guy Buzz McPherson is. He and Nick Pilato shaking hands. If you think John Caruso, the owner of this team, isn't happy, well, how many times to see an owner out of the ice in the receiving line? It looks like a wedding reception, except there are a lot of brides and grooms out there. Everybody's shaking hands. John Caruso, the owner of the team, is going to be one of the happiest men in Erie tonight. Nick Pilato still on the line. It's great when you see Brian Coates and Paul Devlin really hacking away at one another during an entire series. Nick Pilato telling players, make sure they check hard, bang this guy to the boards, bang that guy, all in good sportsmanship. And it's great when you see they're able to shake hands after. They're going to be presenting the John Mitchell Trophy. Some of the fans now are starting to go out onto the ice. But they would like everybody to go off the ice so that players can skate around and show everybody what that championship trophy is all about. It's a moment for the players and a moment for the fans, but they want the fans in the stands so that everybody, everybody can see the John Mitchell trophy that is going to be presented by Jack Timmons, the commissioner of the Northeastern Hockey League. And it will be presented to Nick Polano, the head coach of the Erie Blades, and it will be presented to Paul Sheard, the Blades captain. These Blades players are just dancing out there. They could be out there. What a way to end a season. It started out here in this building with maybe 1,000 or 1,100 people watching a team that no one knew would finish the year, much less the league. Two franchises moved. The league finished out, and they finished out strong. Great crowds in Hampton. Great crowds lately in Erie, Pennsylvania. And perhaps the greatest crowd of this series here tonight. Fired up from the opening face-off right to the present. We're going to try to pick up Jack Timmons' words down on the ice with one of our microphones and see if we can get what they're saying down at ice level. I know Jack is going to present it to both Nick Polano and to Paul Sheard. And Jack will have something brief to say. And I know Nick Polano will have something to say as well. And right now we're going to go down below to ice level and try to catch John Leisring with his presentation of the John Mitchell Trophy. Let's see if we can get it for you. Right now the crowd is making it a little bit difficult to hear it. So we'll continue up here. Nick Polano down there with Paul Shear, the Blades captain. John Leisring, who is a public address announcer, will be introducing Jack Timmons. Television cameras out on the ice, a lot of debris. There is going to be a wild party in Erie, Pennsylvania tonight. John Leisring doing the talking down below. <laughs> So Nick Polano is chosen as the third star of the game. You don't think he's too happy? He's chosen as the third star. And we'll wait and see the others. I think Larry Billows is going to get a star. He should get one. 
and Brad Reines, I think, is the first star of tonight's game. Here's the announcement. Larry Billows. Heck of a job for Larry Billows. Played an outstanding game tonight in a losing effort. When you lose a game four to three, though, how do you say it's losing? And Brad Reines is the star of the game again. Brad Reines. A long season for the Erie Blades. They controlled it during the regular season. They had a little bit of trouble with Utica. One game, and that was it. They went to Hampton. They were down 3-1. to one. Nobody quit when they could have. It went right down to a seventh and deciding game. And before a standing room only crowd, this building has gone crazy tonight. And now they're going to be presenting the John Mitchell Trophy. And then it's going to be champagne in the Erie Blades dressing room. John Leisring still down there to try and introduce Jack Timmons. And they will hoist that cup and skate around with it. Much to the delight of this sellout crowd. Jack Timmons just now being introduced. Commissioners are like mayors. They never get loud ovations. In fact, usually they get booed. So Jack Timmons now with a microphone. And he'll be making the presentation. The trophy is big. It is really huge, to say the least. And it will take some effort to carry it out. Jack Timmons congratulating everybody down on the ice. Jack Timmons announcing about the John Mitchell Trophy as some of the fans start to come out on the ice. And he's congratulating Buzz McPherson also. They would like to get the fans cleared off the ice because the players want to skate around with that cup. They really want to show everybody it. So now they're going to present it. Paul Sheard and Nick Pallano will receive it. Paul Sheard holds it up. And they're going to be skating around with that cup. The Erie Blades of the North American Hockey League won at one time. Here's Nick Pallano and he's going to say something. Let's see if we can get this. emotional scene I've ever seen anywhere in any sport in Erie. This is really something what this has done for the town, for the sports fans of Erie, for the team, and for hockey in Erie. Uh, as I said before the game, I believe this will be the turning point. I believe this will just uh, make this franchise. I, I would really like to see the season ticket sales within the next month or so after they go on sale. I think uh, the people will be breaking down the doors to get back. If people were here for the first time, Tonight they saw a fantastic hockey game. The excitement was just the ultimate. You couldn't ask for any more excitement in any type of sport, professional or amateur or whatever. It was right here tonight. The excitement, the tension, the playoff atmosphere, the emotion. The Erie Blaze, champs of the Northeastern Hockey League. 
And with all that out of the way, we're going to pause 60 seconds. Stay tuned because we'll have the post-game show for both WLKK and WYVA in Yorktown. But first, this one-minute timeout. At the Erie County Fieldhouse, we welcome back Station WYVA in Yorktown and, of course, the, our own faithful people that listen in, uh, WLKK. We've got a post-game show, and then I guess on to the party in Erie, Pennsylvania, as the Erie Blades won it tonight, 4-3, to three, a gallant effort by the Hampton Aces. Another period, they might have done the trick. They were skating well, they were getting some chances, but it was not to be as the Erie Blades carried some momentum into the final game and won it by a score of 4-3. to three. With a recap of uh, Game 7, let's go back to Chuck Pora. And well, what more can we say, John Paul? Emotion, what a scene out here. The, the ice is just littered. There's still a few fans out there, a few, few foolhardy fans, I might add. That ice is really slippery with that fog and with the hot temperature. And everywhere you look, you see people just fanning their faces. But uh, still, not too many people have left. There's some slowly filing out, but a lot of people are still in their seats, hugging each other, shaking hands, still jumping up and down, trying to savor every moment. And what a moment this is for the Erie Blades. What a moment this is for ice hockey in Erie and for sports in Erie. As we said, the Erie Blades, the champions of the Northeastern Hockey League, they defeated the Hampton Aces four games to three in the final round after trailing three games to one coming from behind what a comeback they scored it they opened up an early lead tonight and they held on and they just barely held on by the skin of their teeth but it was enough and that's all it counted that's all they wanted Paul Shear guaranteed a win he had that publicly quoted in the morning paper guaranteed a win he got the win he skated around the ice with a cup in his head the final score of today's game the Erie Blades four the Hampton Aces three let's look at the scoring Erie opened up the score first they got in the scoreboard at just the 21 second mark it was Pierre Legacy and uh, what a valuable asset Legacy was John Paul what a valuable man in the faceoff department he had a few key goals a few key assists he had a very key goal today the one that got the blades on the scoreboard first to get it the 21 second mark Pierre's second goal of the playoffs from Paul Devlin and Val James Pierre cruised in from the right side got in too deep tried to dump a little backhand on goal and it was a very little backhand it just bounced and uh, goaltender Michelle Bellamur getting the surprise start in the Nets did not get that skate up against the goal post he left an inch or so and that puck just got right in between his skate and the goal post and here he had a one nothing lead again legacy from Devlin and James at the 21 second mark it was Brad Rhinus giving Erie a two to one or a two to nothing lead make that from Dennis Abgrall at 851 Rhinus cruised around in the slot area ha held on to the puck for what seemed like forever got it to Abgrall behind the net on the left side Rhinus broke right in it was a set play for the blades Abgrall got the puck back to Rhinus Rhinus put it in the net above the goaltender's arm and it gave Erie a two to nothing lead at 851 exactly 10 minutes later at 1851 it was Rhinus again the game's number one star the league's leading scorer only a member of the second team all-star Rhinus getting his second goal of the game and his eighth of the playoffs from Dick Leo and Stan Gullison. This time, Rhinus had the puck in the slot area again. He chose to take a slap shot. Surprise, Bellamere. Rhino doesn't like the slap shots. He let loose with one. Bellamere wasn't expecting it. It was a real rifle, and it gave Erie a 3 nothing lead, and that's the way things stood at the end of one period. Erie 3, Hampton nothing. Penalty minutes in the first period. There were several. Referee Bill Blink is calling a fine game, I felt. 28 minutes in the first period. 14 to Erie, 14 to Hampton. Quickly, Pierre Legacy for Erie, 5 for fighting along with Peter Jack at 2.59. Those two went at it twice in the first period. Dick Leo for Erie, 2 for hooking at 12.30. The Erie penalty killing team did a fine job. Pierre Legacy and Peter Jack again, 7 minutes. This time, 2 for roughing as the two bumped, and then they dropped the gloves and went at it again, 5 for fighting. 7 minutes total in that altercation at 17.12. And Dave Heineck for Hampton, two for high sticking to close out the first period in 1916. Shots on goal in the first period. Erie with 13, Hampton with 11. Looking at the second period, the Blades had the 3-0 lead, but it was Hampton to come back. As we mentioned, Heineck got a penalty to uh, close out the period at the 1916 mark. Erie had a power play, and their power play was uh, futile to say the least. It was very incohesive. Uh, it was not orderly. They did very little in the power play. However, looking at the final score, they did not need to. A shorthanded goal to close the gap to 3-1 to one at the 46-second mark. Larry Billows, his fifth of the playoffs, his first of two in the night. Billows playing a fine game, earning the number two star. Credit the assist to Brian Coates and Greg McPhee on Billows' goal. Coates stole the puck from Daniel Pallon at the right point, got it to Billows. Billows went in on a 2-1, and one, got right in between the defender. Uh, actually, it was a 2-on-2. Two two. It turned out to be Billows got in between the two defenders, slid a low shot along the ice between Walker's pads, and that made the score 3-1. Less than a minute later, at 1.25, it was Billows again to make the score 3-2 and to put the hearts of the Blades fans right up in their throats. Billows got his second goal in less than a minute from Dave Heineck. Again, it was a breakaway. Again, he put the puck between Walker's pads. It was in the net. Close the gap to 3-2. to two. However, at 3.50, a very big goal for Erie. Val James. Val getting his fourth of the playoffs, his fourth goal in three games from Ronnie Hansis and Danielle Pallon. It was James cruising in. Defenseman Greg McPhee had trouble with a broken stick trap down between his skates. He looked out at the stick. James was by him. James cut in kind of deep. He got off a shot on a bad angle. It deflected off Bellamere in the nets to give Erie a 4-2 lead. 
That's the way it stood at the end of two periods. Hampton closing the gap to two goals at the end of two periods, as we said. Penalty minutes in the second period, just two. Greg McPhee for Hampton, two for Holding at 16.50. Gary's power play was nothing. In the third period, there was one goal scored. It was scored by Kelly Dean at the 10.33 mark. Here he started to get defensive. Kelly Dean's goal, he got right into Walker, took the pass from Greg McPhee, put it past Walker on Walker's left side. This closed the gap to 4-3. to three. And the last nine and a half minutes, the excitement was just immense. The tension was just unbelievable. Here we getting defensive much too early, we felt. However, it turned out to be to their benefit as they won the game. What more can you say? They continually dumped the puck out over the blue line, just kept it out of their own zone. They uh, failed to generate much of an up ice rush in the last seven or eight minutes. However, they really didn't need to. Their defensive strategy paid off, although uh, we still felt it was a little bit too early, but that's the way things go. And to make things even more exciting, Floyd lahash went off two minutes for slashing at 6-16. So, with, less, with uh, a little more than three and a half minutes left in the game, Geary was short one man for two minutes. And Erie penalty killing team did a fantastic job, I'd have to say. It was Ronnie Hansis winning the faceoffs when he needed to. It was Daniel Pallon getting the puck down ice. And Erie rather easily killed off the man advantage. Then there were only about a one minute and uh, 40, 44 seconds left in the game. The Blades team uh, killed that one minute and 44 seconds. Bellamere went out of the net. Erie never even paid attention to that empty net. They forced the puck down in the Hampton zone. The final seconds ticked off. The crowd was delirious. The buzzer rang. The Erie Blades won the game 4-3. Shots on goal in the third period. Erie out shooting Hampton 9-8. We failed to mention the second period. Erie out shot Hampton 12-8. Game totals. Erie 34 shots on goal, 27 for Hampton. Penalty minutes by Bill Blinkus. An outstanding game by Blinkus. If there was a fourth star or if an official was eligible, he should have got one. Final penalty minutes, 32 minutes in the game, 16 for each team. Three stars. Number three star, Coach Nick Polano. And uh, what a feeling that must have been for Nick. Nick was like a little boy out there. He was just so excited. The number two star, Larry Bill, is getting two goals, and what a game he had. The number one star of the game, Erie Centerman and uh, leading scorer in the Northeastern Hockey League. Number 10, Brad Ryans with two goals. And the final score of today's hockey game, the Erie Blades cover them, the champs of the Northeastern Hockey League, the orange, black, and white. The final score, the Erie Blades four, the Hampton Aces three. And there won't be hockey again until October. It seems like such a long way off, but it really won't be. Four to three, the final score tonight. At this point in time, we would like to say goodbye to Station WYVA in Yorktown, Virginia, thanking them for carrying this broadcast back down to the good people in Hampton. For those fans in Hampton who have supported the Gulls, through a couple of different leagues and also the Hampton Aces. You can be proud of your hockey club tonight. They certainly did not quit. In fact, they almost turned it around. What looked like a 3 to nothing lead for the Erie Blades and perhaps an easy win, although no wins in this series have been easy. It turned right around as Hampton stormed right back, and all of Hampton can be proud of the effort that their club gave them tonight. Our thanks to you for joining us tonight on the Erie Blades Championship Hockey Network. Staying here on Lake 1260, a few people that we would like to thank back here, uh, on our own station for the support that they have given us. First of all, to Chuck Pora for working with me all year. It's been my pleasure, Chuck, and uh, it's been a long season. It's kind of ironic that it all came down to this one game and all of this excitement, but it's been nice working with you, and I hope that people enjoyed all of the broadcasts this year over Lake 1260. Thanks very much, John. I really enjoyed working with you. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you're a real pro, and you helped me a lot during the season, and uh, you're your colorful description, Erie Blades play-by-play, play. well, it's meant a lot to this hockey franchise and to this town. All I've heard is uh, good comments on that respect all year, and, uh, you know, to get a real pro like you here is really helping. That's about all I can say there, and uh, I'll tell you what, I really don't look forward to the summer. I'm not much of a summer person. I like the hockey season. I'm a hockey fan, and I'll be looking forward to next October. The heck with the summer. We'll wait for next October and the return of hockey here in Erie. Well, it feels like summer right now tonight, that's for sure, even though there's a hockey game being played. There are a few people that I would like to thank personally, and it would take too much time to mention them all individually. A lot of people have worked with us this year. I would like to personally thank everyone that worked within the Erie Blades office staff who have helped me immensely during my year here, to the news media that I had to deal with on a regular basis, radio, television, and newspaper, to Dave Gifford of WLKK and his fine staff of announcers and all people there for helping to promote the Erie Blades. I think without their help, uh, we might not have filled the building here tonight. It was a great satisfaction to see all the work that was done in this with this franchise come to uh, really the full tilt tonight before a standing room only crowd. Our thanks also to a couple of more special people. One is to Dr. John Caruso, the owner and president of the Erie Blades, and a real special thanks to the person who brought me here initially, and that's the Blades head coach and general manager, Nick Polano. The players this season 
were a younger bunch of players than I've ever dealt with in the past, but I've had more fun this year than any year before. I think the players are super, and I'm very proud and glad that they won it for themselves and their fans tonight. The Booster Club, which was so popular in coming out to the road games, and also to, I think, the best fans in minor league hockey. For the final time tonight, we'd like to thank everyone connected with Lake 1260 and all of our broadcasts and Erie Blades Hockey. For Chuck Pora, I'm John Paul Della Camera. Thanks for listening to Erie Blades Championship Hockey. The final score, the Blades are winners. There'll be a party in Erie tonight. Erie 4, Hampton 3. Erie wins the last three games and clinches the best of seven championship 4-3. to three. This is hockey territory. Exclusive play-by-play coverage of Erie Blades Hockey brought to you.